Welcome to Bhutan e-learning program, Key Stage 5, Biology class for 11 and 12. I'm Sangil Hadin from Karma Academy based at Paro Shaba. All right, let us begin our lesson. But before we move into our lesson, I want to ask you one question. Can we make food? I'll give you time to think. I heard you, some of you are saying we can make food. But let me tell you this. Scientifically, we cannot make food. What we can do is, we can go to the extent of cooking food, but we cannot make food. So who does this? Who does, who prepares the food then? Who makes the food? Yes, you're right. There are autotropic organisms called plants. As you can see in the slide. So these are autotropic organisms that makes food for us. What are these? Have a look at the slide. These are cereals vegetables and fruits. What humans do? They cook and eat this food prepared by the plants. Then don't you wonder how do plants, how do humble and kind plants prepare this food? There is a beautiful term called photosynthesis. You might have come across this word from your lower classes. It is no other than photosynthesis. They prepare food by the process called photosynthesis. So today we are going to learn about this incredible process called photosynthesis. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain photosynthesis, describe the phase of photosynthesis, explain the rate of photosynthesis in relation to law of limiting factor. So this picture gives a general idea of photosynthesis. As you can see in this figure, plants trap sunlight, they use carbon dioxide and water as raw material, form carbohydrates as product and oxygen as byproduct. So have you ever wondered where does this photosynthesis occur? So let us talk about the location or site of photosynthesis. Generally we say photosynthesis occurs in the leaves, right? But to be specific, remember you are a biology student, be specific. Photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast. If we study the structure of this leaf, it consists of upper epidermis covered by a cuticle which prevents loss of water, lower epidermis which consists of stomata. In between these layers, there are mesophyll cells arranged in two ways. Upper ones are arranged compactly, we call it as palisade mesophyll cells. Lower ones are loosely arranged, we call it as spongy mesophyll cells. Meso means in between and fill is related with the leaf. So, these cells are in between these layers. That's why it is called as mesophyll cells. If we enlarge this mesophyll cell, you will see a prominent vacuole. At the side of the vacuole, it will have a nucleus. It is not shown in this figure. And it is said that mesophyll cells, it will contain around 300 chloroplasts in the peripheral, in the periphery of the cytoplasm. If we enlarge this chloroplast, it consists of, so we have chloroplast. It consists of double membranes and it consists of proteinaceous colloidal matrix called stroma. And there are stacks of membranes over one another, a range over one another. We call it as granum. Plural, we call it as grana. These grana are connected by a membranous structure called stroma lamellae. One such structure of granum, we call it as thylakoid. And in the membranes of thylakoid, there are chlorophyll pigments. And light phase of reaction or light phase of photosynthesis occurs in these membranes of thylakoid. In the stroma, dark phase of photosynthesis occurs and all the enzymes required for the process of dark reaction are present in the stroma. Chlorophyll, chloroplast, they will have their own circular DNA and ribosomes. So remember students, my dear students, Light phase of reaction occurs in the membranes of thylakoid and dark phase of reaction occurs in the stroma. And remember, your boss chloroplast is screaming at you, yelling at you that they are the site for photosynthesis. Is it clear? So let us move on with the phases of photosynthesis. We have, as mentioned earlier, we have light independent reaction light dependent reaction light dependent reaction or hill reaction named after the scientist also known as photophosphorylation occurs in the membranes of thylakoid 
why it is called as light dependent reaction? It is because it utilizes light energy for their process. That's why it is called as light dependent reaction. Then why it is called as photophosphorylation? It is because it is involved, this process is involved in the synthesis of ATP by adding phosphate in presence of light. That's why it is called as photophosphorylation. Remember that light reaction involves in the production of NADPH2 and ATP and oxygen are formed as byproduct. Light independent reaction, why it is called as light independent reaction? It doesn't require light, remember that. And don't get a misconception. Just because it is known as dark reaction, don't think that it occurs only, only in the dark. It's not like that, my dear students. They may occur in presence of light or in absence of light. Then why it is called as dark reaction? It is because it doesn't utilize light energy for their process. What do they do is, they will utilize this NADPH2 and ATP, also known as assimilator power. They will utilize this for fixation of carbon dioxide and then reduces carbon dioxide into glucose. Since they are involved in the synthesis of glucose, they are called as biosynthetic phase. We are now with the light dependent reaction that is photophosphorylation which comprises of non-cyclic photophosphorylation and cyclic photophosphorylation. Non-cyclic photophosphorylation involves both photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Photosystem 2 reaction center is P680 which means that chlorophyll A of photosystem 2 absorbs shorter wavelength of light which is around P680 uh, nanometer. Chlorophyll A of Photosystem 1 absorbs longer wavelength of light that is around 700 nanometer. So, start with the photosystem 2 in case of non cyclic photophosphorylation. When the reaction center of photosystem 2 captures photons, it gets activated. After getting activated, the electrons in the reaction center get energized, and then pair of electrons leaves the reaction center, and these are acted accepted by the primary electron acceptor that is pheophytine. Then it is transferred to plastoquinone represented by PQ, then to cytochrome complex and then to plastocyanine that is PC. Then it is transferred to reaction center of photosystem 1 that is P700. When reaction center of P photosystem 1 gets activated by capturing photons, Electrons get energized and then electrons leaves the reaction center and are accepted by primary electron acceptor. Then it is transferred to ferrodoxine and then to NADP. Now the electrons lost from the reaction center of photosystem 2 is replaced by the photolysis that is breaking of water in the presence of sunlight. Water gets broken down into half oxygen and pair of protons and pair of electrons are released. Pair of electrons released that goes into the reaction center the P680 and the lost electrons lost from this reaction center are replaced by this photolysis. And the protons, pair of protons released goes to NADP and then it combines with the pair of protons in presence of pair of electrons with the help of enzyme NADP reductase and then NADPH2 is formed. NADPH2 is a reducing power, remember that it will reduce carbon dioxide into glucose later in the Calvin cycle, that is the dark reaction which occurs in the stroma. Since the flow of electrons is in the pattern, follows the pattern of Z, we also call this photophosphorylation, non-cyclic photophosphorylation as Z scheme. Now let us move on to cyclic photophosphorylation. Cyclic, why it is called a cyclic? Because the electrons lost comes back to the reaction center. In case of non-cyclic, the electrons lost from the P680 doesn't come back to its reaction center. That's why it's called as non-cyclic. So in cyclic photophosphorylation, when the reaction center gets activated by capturing photons, pair of electrons are released from the reaction center, it gets accepted by the primary electron acceptor, then it is transferred to ferrodoxine, plastoquinone, cytochrome complex, and then plastocyanin, and then it comes back to its reaction center, that is P700. 
these cyclic photophosphorylation operates when only the longer wavelength of light that is 700 nanometer is available. In absence of short wavelength of light, PS2 becomes inactive and only the PS1 functions. So, you have to know in which path the ATP are synthesized. So, have a look at this, have a look at this figure. When the electrons passes through the ferrodoxine, ADP combines with the inorganic phosphate and then ATP is synthesized. And again, when the electron passes through the cytochrome complex, ADP combines with the inorganic phosphate and ATP is synthesized. Okay, let us have a quick check here. Where does like reaction occur in chloroplast? What are the products of light reaction? So, where does the light reaction occur in the chloroplast? I mentioned you I mentioned earlier that it occurs in the membranes of thylakoid because there is a presence of chlorophyll pigments. What about dark then? Dark reaction? Yes, dark reaction occurs in the stroma. And all the enzymes required for the dark reaction process are present in the stroma. What are the products of light reaction? The light reaction products are ATP, NADPH2, they are also known as assimilatory power and oxygen is produced as byproduct. Since you are now very familiar with the non-cyclic photo photophosphorylation, oxygen is formed by breaking off water. We call it as photolysis because it happens in the presence of sunlight. Can dark reaction happen during daytime? Can dark reaction happen at night? Of course, yes. Then why the dark reaction, dark work comes there? It's just because it doesn't utilize light energy for their process. That's why it is called as dark reaction. But dark reaction can happen in light as well as in nighttime. So every plants, they have their own ways of fixing carbon dioxide and then reducing carbon dioxide into glucose. Some plants such as C3 plants fixes and reduces carbon dioxide by C3 cycle. Some plants fixes and reduces carbon dioxide by C4 cycle. Some camp plants does this by through camp pathway. Since majority of photosynthetic plants fixes and reduces carbon dioxide through C3 cycle, we are going to focus C3 cycle in this lesson. So let us begin. So let us focus on Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle named after the scientist. They are also called as dark cycle or they are also called as C3 cycle. Why it is called a C3 cycle? If you look at the cycle here, the first stable compound formed is consists of three carbon atoms that is phosphoglycerate. That's why it is called as C3 cycle. I repeat again, the first stable compound formed in this cycle is compound which consists of three carbon atoms. That's why it is called as C3 cycle. It's going to be boring if you learn in a normal way, so I'm going to teach you in the form of a story. All right, so focus. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful girl called Rappi, which stands for ribulose 1,5 biphosphate. It consists of five carbon atoms. So this Rappi calls her friend. She calls a friend and her friend name is Rubisco. Rubisco stands for ribulose 1,5 biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. Rubisco has dual nature. Remember that. Her friend isn't fixed. She has got dual nature. Sometimes in presence of high concentration of oxygen, she acts as oxygenase. In presence of high concentration of carbon dioxide, she acts as carboxylase, which means in presence of carbon dioxide, Rubisco helps in the fixation of carbon dioxide in the cycle. So come back to our story. Rub calls a friend called Rubisco. Hey Rubisco, let us fix this carbon dioxide. All right, then they goes and fixes this carbon dioxide to the cycle. And when they fixes this carbon dioxide to the cycle, unstable compound which consists of six carbon atoms is formed. Then the unstable compound is nervous right now. She's really nervous, unstable compound. Oh, I want to get stable. What should I do? Then 
the unstable compound gets the idea. It is splits by hydrolysis. It splits by hydrolysis and forms the first stable compound, two molecules of 3-PGA, that is phosphoglycerate. We can say glycerate 3-phosphate as well. All right? Then this 3-PGA is really greedy. 3-PGA announces, I want phosphate announces with a very loud voice humble and kind ATP two molecules of ATP comes into action and then gives their phosphate two phosphate two two molecules of 3PGA then the greedy 3PGA takes this phosphate and then gets converted into 1,3-di-PGA is it clear? 1,3-di-phosphoglycerate again the greedy, greedy nature doesn't go Again, it announces with a loud voice, I want hydrogen. Again, humble and kind NADPH2 comes into action and then surrenders their hydrogen to 1,3-di-PGA. By combining with the hydrogen, they get, now they get converted into, they become pagal. Not literally pagal, but to remember PGL, we call it, you can call it as pagal. They become pagal. PGL stands for phosphoglyceraldehyde. It, it is a three carbon compound. Pagal ha, has an isomer. It can get converted into DAP, DHAP. It is a three carbon compound. DHAP stands for dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Remember, these two we can call it as simply triose phosphate. All right. So this one molecule of pagal remains in the cycle, all right? They remains in the cycle and then just like you might have watched watch a project movie, just like the character, sometimes they get converted into erythrose, sometimes they convert, get converted into ceduheptulose, sometimes they convert, get converted into RUMP, that is ribulose monophosphate. Now the ribulose monophosphate, again, the ribulose monophosphate wants one phosphate. She screams and says, I want phosphate. Again, who is humble and kind? ATP. ATP comes in and then surrenders its one phosphate to RUMP. RUMP gets one uh, phosphate and then gets converted into RUBP. So this is how RUBP is regenerated. Is it clear? So from this, you can remember DHAP gets converted into fructose 1,6-diphosphate, into fructose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate, and then synthesizes glucose. So how to remember this? My dear students, how to remember this? You can simply remember this way. Derp likes to sing a song. Derp sings a song, fructose, fructose, glucose, glucose. What a simple song. So fructose. Fructose 1, 6 diphosphate, again fructose, fructose 6 phosphate, again glucose, glucose 6 phosphate, and then finally glucose. So from RUBP till the first stable compound that is 3 PGA, it is called as carboxylation because this is the steps or phase where the carbon dioxide gets fixed. That's why it is called as carboxylation. From 3 PGA till PGAL, it is called as reduction phase. And remember, reduction phase is the, just the reversal of glycolysis. PGAL till RUBP, it is the regeneration phase. Regeneration phase because it regenerates RUBP. Is it clear? So this is a C3 cycle. Remember the three phases and remember these key players. Now let us discuss the re factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis. There are many factors, external and internal factors. We are going to focus on major factors, which includes carbon dioxide, light, temperature, and water. Next we have light. The rate of photosynthesis increases as the concentration of carbon dioxide, the rate of photosynthesis increases when there is a slight increase in the carbon dioxide concentration. In the atmosphere, there is 
there are very less, there are very less of carbon dioxide concentration. Carbon dioxide concentration varies from 0 0.03 percent to 0 0.04 percent. The, the slight increase in the carbon dioxide con concentration will increase the rate of photosynthesis, but beyond the level of 0 0.05 percent, the carbon dioxide becomes toxic to the plant cells and the rate of photosynthesis does not increase any further. So, have a look at this graph. With a slight increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide, the rate of photosynthesis increases. At a certain point, the carbon dioxide, even if we increase the concentration of carbon dioxide, the rate of photosynthesis will stop. It will not increase any further. And remember that carbon dioxide plays as a major limiting factor, which affects the rate of photosynthesis. Next, we have light. And as you know that light varies in quality, in intensity and duration. In terms, of, in terms of quality of light, around light with the wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometer favors the rate of photosynthesis. In terms of light intensity, as the light intensity increases, rate of photosynthesis also increases. But at a certain point, the rate of photosynthesis will not increase. This is because of two reasons. Some limiting factors are not available such as carbon dioxide and one another reason is the chloroplast gets damaged at high light intensity. Next we have duration of light. Long duration of light favors the rate of photosynthesis which means rate of photosynthesis increases if plants are exposed to lights for longer duration. And next we have temperature. Temperature, they have, it has got three cardinal points, minimum, optimum and maximum. At minimum temperature, the rate of photosynthesis starts, it progresses and the rate of photosynthesis is maximum at the optimum temperature and then the rate of photosynthesis stops at maximum temperature. Next we have water and as you know that water acts as a raw material for photosynthesis, it will definitely enhance the rate of photosynthesis. So, what are the factors? Let us recall what are, what are the factors? Carbon dioxide which is a major limiting factor and then light intensity and again light intensity varies in duration, in quality and in intensity. And then we have temperature and then water. And let us talk about the two important terms. When you talk about the factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis, you have to know this Blackman's law of limiting factor. Let us take the limiting factors, temperature, light and carbon dioxide. Let us say temperature, light and carbon dioxide, they are present in equal amount that is let us say these are at high concentration. During that time in this condition during this condition the rate of photosynthesis will have no problem rate of photosynthesis will increase. But let us say let us assume that carbon dioxide concentration is really low. So, in this type of condition, no matter how high the light, how high the light intensity is, no matter how high the temperature is, if the concentration of carbon dioxide is low, these least concentration that is carbon dioxide will decide the rate of photosynthesis, which means the rate of photosynthesis will drop down. Why? because the carbon dioxide concentration is at low concentration, low level, all right. So, Blackman's law of limiting factor explains that the factor if it is at minimum concentration and other factors if they are at high concentration, the factor with the low concentration will affect or decide the rate of photosynthesis. So, in order to increase the rate of photosynthesis, all this have to be at optimum 
or high concentration. If one of these is at low concentration, remember the fact rate of photosynthesis will drop down. So, this is the concept of Blackman's law of limiting factor. So, my dear students, our lesson has come to an end. I want you to carry out some tasks. As you can see in this slide, how are plants responsible for reducing global warming? Explain from the point of photosynthesis. How would life would be on earth without chlorophyll? Explain. How are light reactions connected to dark reaction? So this is the end of the lesson. I recommend you to stay curious and happy learning. Thank you.